What's up guys, it's Chris and Averitt, and in this video we're going to be talking about all things Averitt. It's a new year, 2024 rolled around. I hope everyone out there had a good Christmas time with your family or friends, and I hope you're starting 2024 off on a good foot. It usually takes me a few weeks to get our year going, especially when I'm writing dates on paperwork. I have to chicken scratch out the year all the time. I'm sure you guys would do the same thing. Getting used to writing 24 instead of 23. <laughs> but I hope everyone has a good year. And um, if you're looking to make a change and you want to find a different company to work for, maybe this video will help you out. Um, I'm going to give all of the information what it's like to work here at Averitt. I put out all of my numbers each year, telling you exactly how much I made, how much I paid insurance, how much profit sharing was. All that's going to be in this video, just like I do every year. Other than that, there's not a whole lot that's changed. It's been kind of a quiet year at Averitt. Um, so there's really not a whole lot of difference between this video and my last review video, but still we're going to run through it anyway. Uh, a couple things, you know, Averitt does not pay me or ask me to make these videos. I do this on my own accord. Um, I don't monetize my videos here on YouTube and, uh, I got accused a few years back that I make these videos just to get a re uh, referral bonus from people. Guys, that's not the case. To be straight honest with you, we get $1,000 for a student that joins Averitt um, after 30 days. So you have to be here 30 days and then I would get $1,000. That's before taxes. So after taxes, it's like what, eight something? It's not life-changing money, guys, and I'm lucky to get one a year. Um, so that's not the reason why I make these videos, all right? I make these videos to put out information to help drivers out there in the industry. Um, if I do manage to get a referral bonus, like I said on my last video, I normally use that money to take my wife out on a date night somewhere. Um, I will take her up to Gatlinburg and we'll spend the weekend up there or we'll just have a really nice long weekend in Atlanta somewhere, date night, dinner, movie, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's what I use that money for. I don't depend on it. And like I said, I'm lucky to get one a year. So squash that now, right? So I'm not trying to put this information out there, trying to lure you into Averitt. Like I said, everything that I say, I'm going to be able to back up with pictures, all right? If you have any questions or anything, my name is Chris Yon. And I have an email address set up that I answer just for these videos. It's chris at averitt at gmail.com. You can ask me questions about Averitt or trucking or life on the road or whatever you need to know um, about the industry, and I'm happy to help. Uh, let's see. I guess that's it. We're going to start getting through it, I guess. So I got my tablet here in front of me with all the things I want to cover. But let's start with the pay. Now, for last year, my paycheck, my total amount earned was 84000 $256.80. Now, I am on a dedicated account, but I get paid the same amount of money as a normal truckload driver. So whatever they make cents per mile is what I make cents per mile. I believe that starts at uh, 58 cents per mile right today, starting out 58 cents per mile. Um, we didn't get... I don't know the last time we had to raise. I don't know if we got one in 2023 or not, to be honest. It's it's been a while, so I think it's overdue. There are talks already about that going up above 60, so we'll see if that happens. But we, I will say that we are overdue for a raise. Normally, we get two or three a year, but 2023 was pretty quiet, so that's why I'm thinking we're kind of overdue for one. So I expect that to go up pretty quickly here, maybe in the first half, maybe even the first quarter of this year. So it's, it's um, 58 cents a mile starting out in the door day one. You do not have to have your hazmat to join Averitt Express. However, once you get on board, they do want you to get that hazmat, okay? Uh, just because it's easier for them to uh, book loads and stuff. We don't haul any kind of dangerous freight here at Averitt. Uh, whenever we talk about hazmats, like I said, I use a couple examples because I haul this stuff all the time is um, Coke flavorings, like the syrup, it is flammable and corrosive in the big 250 gallon IBC containers with the steel cages around them. You know, that's a hazmat load. Um, chlorine pool tablets that you drop in your pool to clean your pool. Those are oxidizers, so that's a hazmat load. Uh, the most dangerous thing I think we actually haul here at Averitt, I think would be class 1.4, and that is fireworks. And that is very limited. We don't haul many of that at all, and it's, of course, seasonal for the most part. Um, I don't see many of those at all. I've never hauled them, but I have seen a trailer every now and again have you know, the 1.4 placard on it. So I think that is the 
most dangerous thing we probably haul. Uh, but if you're scared about hazmat or anything, don't be. Um, it, we really don't haul anything really nasty here at Abrup. All right. So I did talk to other some other people in different divisions just to get kind of get an idea of what they make as well. Now they didn't give me exact numbers, but I can kind of give you an idea. Um, team teams over here are running somewhere between 5,600 miles to 6,200 miles at an 85 cent split. That is for team shuttle drivers. Single sleeper shuttle drivers, this is one person in the truck, is getting somewhere between 2,300 miles and 2,500 miles a week. And these shuttle positions pay more. They pay a lot more than truckload. They're some of the highest paying uh, positions here at Averitt. The shuttle positions, what they will do is they will shuttle freight between our service centers. So we have many different service centers and these people, these drivers never go to an actual customer. They just take freight from our terminal in Atlanta and they take it to our terminal in Houston or they may take it up to our terminal in Chicago. They never deal with the actual customers. The reason that it pays more is because the single trucks with only one driver in the trucks are normally overnight runs all the time. You're going to be running at night. Um, other than that, it's very demanding. You have to be on time. The stuff can't be late. So, you know, it's it's going to be a, a little more of a challenge. So they, they kind of compensate for that. City drivers are getting between 40 to 45 hours per week. Pay is all over the place on that one. I cannot help you there because it depends on everything. It depends on your seniority. It depends on what route you're on. It depends on where where you're at, which, you know, which area of the country you're in. You know, someone in, like I said, Chicago, it may pay a couple more cents per mile than, you know, just for an example, like Nashville. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Nashville's a big city too, right? But I'm just saying that it, it does fluctuate just a little bit depending on where you are in the country. So normal truckload, I've heard various answers on that one too. I know when I was running normal truckload before I got on this dedicated account, I was getting somewhere between 2,300 miles a week, um, give or take 2,400 miles a week. Um, I could probably push it if I wanted to. There's been several weeks where I got close to 3,000, but I am a very home time driven person. My wife and my kids are home. My, my kids are adults now, but they're still at home. Uh, my daughter's in college, and, uh, you know, I like my home time. I like to come out here Monday through Friday and then give me my weekend. So if you need to make more money, you can make a lot more than I did. But like I said, I made $84,256.80 last year, and that is me going home every single weekend. Um, I don't play around with that. If something slips up and I have to stay out one weekend, I do let it slide occasionally, or if I get home late on a Saturday or something like that, but it's certainly not something that they make a habit of. They know where I stand on that. I'm not trying to talk big. I'm just saying that if you want to make more money, if you don't need to be home like I do, you can make more money, right? So anyway, let's go on to the next topic here. Let's talk about, well, how about benefits? Benefits are great here at Averitt. We have all different kind of benefits. Um, you know, as far as benefits regarding pay, we have all the normal stuff. You got your detention pay, your breakdown pay, your multi-stop pay, layover pay, all this stuff. You know, every company has this stuff. So you, we all have all of that here at Averitt. You have your um, your vacation time. So whenever you join Averitt, after a couple months, I think it's three months, 90 days, you get your first um, week of vacation. So like it's January when I'm filming this video. If you joined up in January, come what, March or April, you would have a week's worth of PTO to use for this summer in 2024 if you wanted to do that. Um, so that's pretty cool. After two years, or as after a year, I can't remember now. It goes up to two weeks, and then after eight years, it goes up to three weeks. So um, yeah. So that's how PTO works. It goes up from there, but you will get your PTO, your first week of PTO the same year, just a few months after you start working here at Averitt. So that's pretty cool, um, especially if you're thinking about switching, but you also want to take a vacation with your family. Um, I know that would be a big perk for me. I am entering my 10th year here at Averitt. 10 years. I can't believe it. Um, longest I've ever worked for any company, uh, regardless if it's trucking or not. So 10 years. I'm excited about that. Anyway, let's start to the next part. Continuing with benefits, we have awesome health 
vision, dental, prescription, all of that stuff, guys. We, um, I think Averitt is kind of known for having some of the best insurance around. It's cheap. Um, I'm gonna pull it up right here. <clears throat> now I have it for myself, my wife, and my two kids. My two kids are adults now, but they're still under my plan. Um, so I cover all of them, and we have the best options available in all of them. So the best option for medical, the best option for dental, the best option for vision. Um, I think they give us two options to choose from. One's kind of like a higher tier, better benefits. One's kind of a lower tier with you know less coming out of your check each week. But I get the best because I know that one medical emergency can really put somebody in the hole and I don't, I don't like that. I like having that base covered. So uh, I get the top shelf for everything. But for medical, I pay $106.85 per week. For dental, I pay $16.65 per week. And for vision, I pay $9.75 per week. Um, that's, like I said, top shelf for me, my wife, and my two kids, all four of us, on the best plan available. So it's, what, 100 what, $130 a week, something like that. So it's not bad. It's, it's really good stuff, too. I've never had a problem using it. We went on a vacation to Disney. Um, we were there for nine days earlier in December, and I unfortunately brought back the souvenir of strep throat. Um, it hit me as soon as I got back in the truck. I felt terrible. You know, if you ever had strep, you know you have strep. I mean, you know you have it. You know you know what it feels like. You got the patches in your on your tonsils area if you look in your mouth. Um, so yeah, I couldn't swallow. It was like razor blades. So instead of missing work, we have Teladoctor. Uh, we can call this number, talk to a doctor, or have a video call with them, and they will talk to you about your symptoms, and they will call in a prescription wherever you are in the country. So like I stay here in Chattanooga most of the time, most every evening since I'm on a dedicated account, I stay in Chattanooga. So the doctor was able to call in a prescription for me to our local Walgreens here in Chattanooga and I was able to bobtail personal conveyance over there to pick it up so it, it saved me from having to uh, miss a day of work didn't cost me a dime um, so it, it's great we have that service available too all of your preventable stuff for your medical is all included too so you know any kind of blood work you get done that stuff's covered uh, for the ladies, your mammograms and everything down below, all of that's covered. Uh, you know, all of the preventative stuff, your dental cleanings, your vision checks, all of this. So it's really good insurance. Um, I've never had a problem using it. My wife has never had a problem using it. Uh, so it's really good. All right, let's go back here. All right. All right, so another perk, like I said, I want to talk about a little bit is home time. I've already touched on this a little bit, but I am a very much a family man. Uh, I grew up without a father. My father was not in the picture. He was a piece of garbage. Um, I know you're not supposed to think that way about your parents, but just can't help it in this case, guys. My dad was not a good man, and um, I know what that's like. So my home time is number one. It's bad enough that I have to be away from my family Monday through Friday, but the weekends are mine. And my kids used to be in school. Now they go to college. One One's working and one goes to college right now. And uh, so they're gone during the week anyway. My wife works Monday through Friday, so it's not that big of a deal that I'm gone Monday through Friday. But on the weekends, we're all at home together, and I'm going to be there too. Well, So home time is very important to me. So if you have a wife, kids, maybe an elderly parent or anything like that, Averett works very well for people in that situation. They get you home, okay? They really get you home. Uh, so it's, it's awesome. Um, another perk, maybe it's a perk for people, maybe it's not, is the uniforms. All your clothes are covered here at Averett. You get $150 every year to spend in the Averett store to get new uniforms. They have all different styles from button-up shirts, long sleeves, short sleeves, uh, shorts, pants, socks. I mean, they have everything in that store. Um, it's not just one size, you know, men, they have men and women's uniforms because I know a woman's body is shaped a little bit differently than a man's. So they actually have 
shirts and such that are made to fit a woman's body. So it's not like it's all men's clothes. Um, so that's pretty cool. <coughs> a lot of people don't like being told what to wear. But from my point of view, it doesn't bother me at all because one, I don't pay for it. Number two, this is pretty much exactly what I wear whenever I was working at other trucking companies. It wasn't Averitt, but it was always a button-up shirt. It was always pants, although they were blue jeans instead of uh, gray charcoal dress pants. But, you know, this is the kind of stuff I wore all the time. Uh, you get a lot of these guys that are out here running, you know, sleeveless t-shirts and, you know, kind of dirty and nasty and grungy looking. Those are the ones that usually have a problem with wearing the uniform. They don't like it because, well, they like to wear their nasty clothes. So, but it's, you know, like I said, it's a uniform. It makes you look sharp and um, it's free. I don't have to worry about getting fifth wheel grease on my own clothes and ruining them because if I get fifth wheel grease on this, I've got a lot more in the backpack there and I get more every year. So no big deal. Um, so uniforms are covered. Another perk is our service centers, and this was a big one for me because if you've been in the industry for a little bit, you know that driving a truck, if you don't stop sometime between 6, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, you're not going to find a parking space. At the truck stop, rest area, uh, you have to get creative and find like a, a Walmart or a Home Depot, and even those are kicking truck, truckers out anymore. Or you get to sleep on a ramp, which is dangerous and really not legal, so you can get ticketed for it. Uh, it it's just it's it's a very stressful situation, especially if you're picking up a load and like the shipper was supposed to be done at four o'clock, but they had to forklift tear up, and now it's like eight nine o'clock at night, and you're out of hours, and you're stressing about where you're going to park for the night. This is a major thing with Averett. We have over a hundred service centers or terminals from Texas East and we have them everywhere. And if you need to go out of route to get to one, Averett doesn't mind that you do that. We never have to worry about a place to park ever. These things are open all the time, 24 seven. Most of them have fuel, most of them have showers, some of them have gym equipment, vending machines. Um, a lot of them, well, most of them, almost all of them, you can have food brought in through like DoorDash or Uber or whatever. So it's just great. You know, we always have a guaranteed place to park. We never have to worry about that stress of uh, finding a truck stop parking spot. And on top of that, you know, you're around your coworkers. You know, the chances of you getting hit by another Averitt driver are slimmer than some random one truck company that where the guy can barely speak three words of English, all right? I'm not going to say it's never happened, especially in our Nashville service center because that place is so tight. Um, it has happened before. One Averitt driver has backed into or sideswiped another Averitt trailer. Um, it has happened before. It's, we're not immune to it or anything, but it's less likely to happen here. And if it does happen, the driver is more than likely not just going to pull off and leave, right? So uh, it, it's just great to have the service centers here. It really is. Like I said, you sleep, you got a guaranteed place to park, you get up in the morning, get your fuel, do your pre-trip, and you're out for the day. Um, it's just, it's really nice. So, <clears throat> all right, let's see. What else we're going to talk about here? Let's talk about uh, profit sharing. I guess that's the next big thing. Now, Averitt doesn't do any kind of 401k matching. We do have a 401k plan here, and you can contribute however much of you want to your paycheck towards that. Uh, we have it through a company called Principal. It used to be Wells Fargo. I am so thankful they got rid of Wells Fargo because Principal is so much better. I got over a 30% return on my uh, money last year. And uh, their, their interface is really nice to use on their website. You go in and pick your, your funds that you want. You can adjust how much is taken out of your paycheck all, any anytime you want. So if you come across the hardship, let's say you have 20% taken out and you need to turn it off for a little bit while you recover from your hardship, maybe you had a car accident or something and you need you needed extra money, um, it's easy to go on the principal website and turn that off and then turn it back on whenever you are okay. Uh, so profit sharing is really cool. What they do is they take a percentage of the profits from the company and they divide it among all the associates and they automatically drop that into a 401k account in your name. Um, 
it's not a wash. It's a significant amount of money. 2023 was not the biggest year we've had. I think the biggest year we've had was a couple years ago. We had right at $10,000 put into our accounts in a single year, free money, not counting your own contributions. Um, this year, I just pulled it up, and it is $7,096.54. So it's still not chump change. You know, $7,000 towards your retirement free money for a year, not counting anything that you put in. Um, that's that's a lot of money. So profit sharing over here is pretty cool, and it gives us an incentive to just try to drive better. I mean, the more profitable the company is, the more money gets trickled down into that profit sharing account. So getting things like on-site fuel instead of getting it at the pilot, or you know, just avoiding accidents, or OS&D freight, or anything like that, all these little things will add up to trickle down to profit sharing. So it kind of gives you an incentive for doing a good job other than just getting a thank you from your fleet manager. <laughs> <coughs> All right, so we're going to talk about the equipment for a little bit now, I guess. Um, the equipment, it's its standard Freightliners, guys. It's straight uh, Freightliner Cascadias. If you've never been in one, I do like the Freightliner Cascadias. I know they call them freight shakers and all this, but I have been in Volvos. I have been in Internationals, uh, Kenworths, and I like my Freightliner Cascadia because there is so much space in here. Now, I used to be a trainer. I still have trainer status with Averitt, but since I'm on a dedicated account now, I don't train. But even when I was training, I could have a second person in here with all of their stuff, and we still wouldn't be bumping into each other. We had plenty of room. Uh, it's just, it's, there's just so much room in the Cascadias. I love them. Um, <coughs> let's see. They are automatics. Sorry about that, guys. Um, it will grow on you. This is the first time that I was in an automatic. I worked at Maverick before coming here, and it was my very first automatic. Uh, but I only stayed there like a, a year and a half before I came to Averitt. So this is the first like real automatic that I've ever just always driven. And uh, it took me a while to get used to it, not going to lie. Um, but I don't know if I would change it now. Um, it's just convenient. You know, it's just convenient. Uh, I actually got into a friend's truck not a, not too long ago maybe six months ago and and drove around a little bit in our town and i can still do it guys i can still shift those gears but boy i'm rusty boy i can't float them like i used to i tell you that so uh if i ever leave Everett and go back to another company with that has a straight shift yeah i can do it it's just going to take me a little bit to shake the rust off but they are automatics over here at Averitt. um they are set for 65 they keep trying to get that push to be bumped up. Hasn't happened yet. We'll see what happens in 2024. Not looking for it to happen, but you never know, right? Uh, so 65, we have refrigerators in all the trucks. We have AP, or APUs. We have APUs also that provide you with heat, air conditioning, and electricity while the truck is off. They are the diesel burning type, so they are the little engine that sits outside the truck. Um, we also have inverters pre-installed in the truck. So my truck has a 2,000 watt inverter. I've seen some 1,500 watt inverters, but even that, I have never had any problems running a microwave, my laptop. Um, I've got a television in the back that I don't get to use very often, but I still have one back there. Um, so I, I don't have a problem with the inverter at all. So the trucks are your, your normal truck, guys. Um, I don't really have a problem out of their equipment. Every now and again, you're going to get one that has a weird glitch or a weird fault or something like that. That it's it's kind of weird to figure out or it takes them a little while to figure out, but they eventually get it taken care of. Um, don't ex don't come to Averitt and expect a brand new truck right out the gate. Okay, I, I I talked to a guy or seen a guy or heard about a guy who was kind of upset that he came to Averitt and his truck had 300,000 miles on it. Okay, you're not going to go to any company and get a brand new truck. I mean, there might be some companies out there that do that, but um, you're not going to do that. Uh, but it doesn't take long to get a new truck here at Avery. Uh I get a new truck every year, year and a half. Um, it goes by seniority, but even my very first truck at, here at Averitt, and this was before they were changing them out every four years. They used to keep them for a lot longer than what they, they do now. 
Uh, my first truck, whenever they traded it in, had 680-something thousand miles on it. And ever since I had that, I drove that truck for about a year. And then they gave me one that had 100,000 miles on it. Drove that for a year or a year and a half. And then I've been getting new trucks ever since then. So like I said, I get a new truck every year and a half, every year, somewhere in that. My last truck before I got in this one had 80,000 miles on it. It didn't even have its second PM yet before they gave it, trickled it down to one of the new drivers coming into the company. So uh, the equipment over here is pretty good. It's pretty uh, well maintained. It's not an old fleet at all. Um, just know that you won't be getting a brand new truck as soon as you come here, but it's not going to take you long to get one. If you stay here a couple years, I can almost guarantee you will be in a brand new truck. All right. Let's see. What else? Let's talk about, well, the divisions. I guess I made a video long ago. Most of the information still stands about all the divisions here at Averitt. They have everything from wild truckload. They call it regional. Um, that's just going from customer to customer where you go home every weekend. They have a, they have a slew of dedicated accounts. They have the shuttle positions where you're driving overnight. They have city positions where you're, you know, you come in and drive a day cab. They have the touring division where you're going out for months at a time, traveling all over the country and up into Canada that handle festivals and concerts and all that kind of stuff. So they really have something for everybody here at Averitt. And you are free to bounce between divisions, like I'm on a dedicated account right now. But if I wanted to try the OTL division, all I have to do is pick up the phone and tell them that I want to try the OTL division and they will get the ball wheel rolling on that. Um, likewise, if you're in OTL division and you want to go to normal truckload, you can do that too. Uh, there is, you know, it's not going to be like an instantaneous thing. You're not going to make the phone call and, hey, tomorrow you're on truckload. But they will work with you and they will allow you to switch positions within the company. All right. <clears throat> and I guess the last thing I just want to touch on is just the work environment here at Averitt. Uh, I've trained people from all different races and backgrounds all different age ranges from in their 20s all the way up to people that were nearing retirement. Uh, all skin colors, all backgrounds, like I said, from all different parts of the country. And, you know, I've never heard of a complaint about anyone getting mistreated here at Averitt. I know I have never been mistreated here at Averitt. And I know a lot of people here at Averitt, guys. I've been here 10 years. Um, I'm in the public eye quite a bit here at Averitt because I was on the driver council for a while. I've been a trainer. I'm here 10 years. Um, I've held, had multiple fleet managers. I've been to the corporate office a few times. So a lot of people know me here and I've never been disrespected or mistreated. There was only one instance between me and one of my fleet managers one day where things got a little bit heated. Um, it wasn't that bad, but he was having a bad day. I was having a bad day. And we both have one of those personalities where we don't really back down, you know, from confrontation. So it got a little heated on the phone. But uh, the next day we kind of apologized to each other and we just talked it out, you know. So that was the only time that I can say I've ever really had words or uh, escalated tempers with a, a worker here. But they really treat you like family over here. If you have a problem, something comes up. Um, I've seen instances where drivers have had an, a medical emergency at home and they're on the uh, halfway like they may be from florida and they're in texas right now they will Averett will fly you home i mean it's just amazing that they work with you so well and stuff like that i mean it's stuff you kind of expect a company to do but let's face it out here in the trucking industry most companies don't care they don't care about you one bit um but Averett, they they really feel it feels like they do um you know, could things always be better? Of course, all, things could always be better. But when you compare Averitt to other trucking companies, I don't, I don't know if you would find one better um, suited for stuff like that. So, all right, guys, I think I covered everything. Um, if I missed something, no, oh, only 30 minutes long in this video. I'm doing pretty good. Normally they run about 45. So, if I missed anything, please feel free to email me. If you have any questions about the company. Um, again, my name is Chris Yawn, and my email address is chris at averitt at gmail.com. If you want to apply to Averitt, I would appreciate it if you put my name down. If you want to make that process a little easier, just send me that email to that address. 
with your name, your city, state, and zip, and your phone number, and I will be able to submit that information directly to Averitt, and it'll make a file on their computer system to where they call you. You can't fall through the cracks or anything like that because that's all done on the computer. As soon as I send that information on the app, it makes a file on their system. So that's the easiest way to do it, but if you want to do it the old school way and go on the website or call them and fill out an application, you can do that too. And uh, if I get a referral bonus, uh, my wife will be happy about that because I'll take her out on another date. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I'm going to let you guys go. I hope everyone has a really good year in 2024, and uh, we'll see you out here on the road. Bye.